We have water on both sides. It's very close. Chamber Street is only a few blocks long. It's quiet relative to something like Midtown, so we can ride our bikes in the street. Uh, we can go along the water. So it's a wonderful place to raise children. And I think also we have people who are here for the art and all those other things that require space on little funds. You combine that with Wall Street, which helps support the community, and I think that's a summary. We really are a giant strata in a very small space. It's kind of a unique district in terms of the mix of uh, residential and commercial and uh, visitors uh, coming together, retain the business core, and we also have a, a large influx of tourists uh, who come here for the many tourist attractions, including now the 9-11 Memorial and other related sites. So there are some lofts in Tribeca with artists who've been there for decades, and that's uh, something that everybody values very much. It's something that's part of the character of the neighborhood. I don't think Tribeca could have become Tribeca without that. Um, the completion of the Oculus at the World Trade Center, um, you know, there's a ton of stuff that people visit Lower Manhattan for. The Bull, and now the Fearless Girl. That brings a ton of people in and out. Too many people visiting your district, too many people wanting to visit your district. That's a good problem to have. It was a, a neighborhood that for many years was a homosal district. In the last 15 years, our population below Canal Street has doubled. Even though it's a dense and small area, percentage-wise, it's the fastest growing district in Manhattan. I think the biggest challenge to living downtown is this juxtaposition of business and family and they really want different things. So now we have 80-story buildings instead of 40-story buildings. And I'm not sure that it's often well thought out. Where do you put the garbage? How do we get on the sidewalk? What about the train station? How to uh, manage the population growth. And the population just keeps growing and growing and growing and just needs to keep developing schools to meet the need, and as well as enough services. The sanitation pickups, uh, you know, it's a lot of more wear and tear on the roads, may not be able to accommodate the additional uh, traffic. Shortage of school seats, um, not enough space for the downtown Little League to play. That's kind of the, gets to the heart of how that has put strain on our community in terms of residential development versus the development of community facilities and amenities. Rent stabilization is really important in our district where, you know, um, rent prices can skyrocket from month to month. Most of our district uh, have a couple of uh, affordable housing locations. On the east side, there was South Bridge Tower. Now, because most of it is becoming market rate, people are forced to move elsewhere. What I'm looking for from a city council person is something no one else can do for us. Speak for the average person. And that's what I think our challenge is. I don't think there'll be any lack of people that'll speak for the wealthy. Uh, resiliency, uh, that's something that has become, since uh, Superstorm Sandy, a very pressing need because it, the district is not prepared for uh, a, an event of that kind. So uh, there's been a great need for funding, for planning, and what we look for is a council member that will listen to us, understand the, the, the issues that not just we face today, but we have to fix the problems that will face us in the next three to five to 10 years. It's really important that we have good communication and support from our elected officials, speaking with us, getting our opinions on certain things, and then kind of forming their stance on a subject, you know, from the ground up, in a, in a, you know, in a kind of grassroots way.